Hello Internet, Nintendo Reviewer here, and Bersh is with me again. And she also has a little <laughs> friend, Donkey Kong, which should tell you what this video is about if you ignore the title for some reason. But we just came back from seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie, the good one, not the live action one from 30 years ago. Wait, do we not like that one? We don't. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I mean, some people have it as a guilty pleasure, but this this animated one was way better than the live-action one from 30 years ago. <laughs> so, I give you a review of this from two film people, and right off the bat, it was very nostalgic as like two 90s kids who grew up playing the Mario games. Well, you so you more so grew up playing Donkey Kong oh, World games. <laughs> no, oh <my> <laughs> it's okay. He's fine. It's yeah. Donkey Kong. He's tough. He can take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was first of all very well animated. You could tell this was Illumination's handiwork. You know, these people behind all the minions movies. Illumination! Out of yeah. <laughs> Illumination! <laughs> yeah, uh, the animation that I was shocked by how much detail that they had in like Bowser's textures and just all the stuff with the world and They have like, like Mario. pores in their skin yeah. and like their outfits like Mario and Luigi you could see the like string or the yarn embroidery yeah, on their like hats. I was like, cause I mean I like to sew for fun, I'm not good at it, but like stuff like that I noticed and I was like Whoa! Yeah, like the fact they took the time to animate all of that in, like that was crazy how they did all that. Like this is Illumination putting in a lot of effort into their animation and I mean I love how colorful Rainbow Road was because we, we saw the, in the trailer that there was Rainbow <laughs> I was like, Road. Whoa, it's <laughs> like, no, it's not a spoiler, it was in the trailer. <laughs> yes, we're gonna try to keep the spoiler free. Sound wise, I like the sound effects too with what um, with what Illumination was doing with whatever partners that they had for all the sounds because they used a whole bunch of the sounds that were from the games that even just sounded similar to the games and then the music it was like Hollywood's version of Koji Kondo's original scores from these different Mario games. It's like you took a Hollywood epic soundtrack and you were like, by the way, this is the this is a Nintendo film. Yeah, I guess like, so even when even when you could tell that it was done a very Hollywood way, it still sounded like Mario scores or like Donkey Kong scores. Oh, Donkey yeah. Kong. <laughs> so like, as far as the nostalgia angle, like there were a lot of points that got me excited and you got particularly excited when we got to the Donkey Kong parts. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I remember the cartoon and then of course the games and I was just like, oh my gosh, are they gonna show like, like, I. I don't want to spoil it, but like once they showed you the land and the layout, I was like, can we get this at Universal Studios? I was kind of thinking that too, like how they really introduce us to the land of the Kongs. I was like, this looks awesome. I really want the Donkey Kong ride at our Super Nintendo <laughs> World. Can we get this as a roller coaster? I know, please? I'm like jealous that Florida is getting it. I guess we have to go to Florida then. Yeah, I guess we have to. <laughs> but. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You also got excited for your other favorite character, Toad. Toad. Who he got I was surprised how much screen time Toad got. <laughs> like you were I kept hearing, oh Toad. He was like Toad was in this like because you saw in the trailers that there was like a whole bunch of toads just populating Mushroom Kingdom. It's like pretty much just a sea of toads and peach. They're adorable. Yeah. We're adorable. <laughs> Look at us. And like they had some of their own different voices, but the main Toad, the one voiced by Keegan Michael Key, like he actually got a lot of screen time, and he was. <laughs> I loved how they did his character for this. He's like, I mean, I'm not trying to compare it to like anything else, but like it reminded me of Grogu a little bit. Kind of like if, I guess if Grogu had more of a vocabulary, <laughs> Grogu could talk. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of what it reminded. Like this little guy next to another little guy next to yeah. a princess. This little guy is really tough, and he's like, "I'm gonna go on an adventure too, even though I'm I smoke. fear nothing. <laughs> I fear nothing." <laughs> and 
I want to say TV Michael Key actually um, did a pretty good job with his voice, which does bring us to yeah. the voice acting part. Which this has been very divisive as far as like people's thoughts on the voice acting because I know when we a lot saw of it comes from people that aren't voice actors themselves. Yeah. you know, but. Here we are. <laughs> but like when we saw the very first trailer and we heard Chris Pratt's Mario, everyone was like, oh boo, he's just sounding like himself. I was and... surprised when I saw the cast listing say that Chris Pratt, like no, nothing against Chris Pratt, but I was just like, when I thought of, you know, a voice for Mario, I would have never thought of Chris Pratt. Yeah. So I was kind of on edge about that because I'm like, okay, um, that's different. Maybe he had something that nobody else saw and the casting directors did see, so can't be too judgmental about that, especially now that we're in the industry and we kind of yeah. see how things work. It, a lot of things do need change, but, yeah. you know, like... <laughs> Ignoring all the problems yes. with Hollywood casting, and there are plenty of them. Yeah, but, like, I was like, okay, maybe there is a potential for something there that we just aren't hearing. And besides, it's like, the first time we heard it was like uh, two seconds in a 30 yeah. second clip. So we couldn't really be so judgmental in that moment. I know a lot of us think that we have that power because of the Sonic movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, actually, yeah, then you bring that up. That is true that because yeah. of what happened with that, yeah. just from fan demands. So maybe people think more of like, oh, we can make a big difference with that. It is good, but it can be better. Yeah, <laughs> but Chris Pratt actually didn't do a bad job. And I was particularly surprised with when he actually made an effort to sound more like Mario in a particular sequence towards the beginning. I was like, it's like, wait, right at the, I'm pretty sure that scene is already Online yeah, I think people. it is actually. Yeah. yeah, I think it. I think that scene is online. But I was like, wait, that's him. Yeah. He's like actually doing Mario's voice, and like, he sounds kind of like Charles Martinet's Mario, even though it's not him. But as people know, Charles Martinet is in this film. It doesn't like at least IMDb doesn't say exactly which characters he's voicing. I'm pretty sure he's voicing more than one. But there was one in particular that we heard. And I was like, oh yeah, that's definitely him. Yeah. Like he had a good cameo in it. I was the one that I was like, wait, that was that was the voice. Yeah, like when we both heard that, I was like, Charles, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> like, no, that's definitely you. Yeah, I, and I also feel like, I mean, I can't be too critical about the voice acting too because like, I've never, well, okay, I've done voice acting, but not like to this extent, so I can't say too much about it, but. From the video game versus the film, none of the characters sound like their video yeah. game counterparts. Like, I feel like because in the video games, when you play the video games, they don't have like full dialogue. They have their like one liners and then their sound effects that they do. So I feel like, I mean, again, not well, that, complete not, sentences yeah. don't exist in Mario games. Exactly. Like, you got the sounds, you got the woohoo, and you know, the woo, like those yeah. voices and stuff. But like for this, if you're having full on dialogue, maybe it is realistic to be able to carry that voice on. But I kind of feel like, you know, trying to talk in a voice like that for that amount of time, hour and a half film, which it's not what you think it is. It's usually yeah. like 30 different takes and it's like 10 hours in and it's like, can you realistically keep your voice like that for that yeah. long without, you know, messing it up? Who knows? I can't say much, but yeah, none of the characters sound like the video game counterparts, but they sound good. Like I don't, they, I had no problem with it. Like yeah, Peach they sound didn't appropriate. Sound like it. They sound appropriate for their characterizations. Like Seth Rogen, I know you got kind of excited here. <laughs> Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I love Seth Rogen. Okay, it, it was so. more so like he didn't, he didn't quite sound like what I would picture in my head of Donkey Kong's voice sounding like. But it was more the personality that fit how Donkey Kong is usually portrayed in the games. It's like, like, I just, I feel like the Seth Rogen laugh with Donkey Kong, because when that got announced, I was like, I need to see Donkey Kong doing the Seth Rogen laugh because <laughs> I love the way Seth Rogen laughs. <laughs> and of course, Donkey Kong's like one of my favorite video game characters of all time. So I was just like, I need this in my life. Yeah. I was like, I need to see this. <laughs> and so when it happened in the film, I was like, I am content now. This movie is just... 
I need to see it 20 million times. And then of course, <laughs> as everybody's been saying, Jack Black as Bowser was amazing. He was... Like, he was probably the best one, honestly. Like, he was... he did the best job. I mean, they were all really good. They were yeah, all really like, good, but... Jack Black is just, like... He didn't even sound like Jack Black. Yeah, like, well, he kind of did. Like, I could hear it. Because, like, there were certain parts where you're like, wait, is that still him? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. definitely him. <laughs> I grew up watching a lot of Jack Black films, so I was just like, that is definitely Jack Black. But I'm here for it. I love it. I want more Jack Black. I need him in everything now. <laughs> See, the thing that I love about Jack Black is, like, he's very good with his comedic timing so I feel like with Bowser being this like very menacing character to have like Jack Black be the voice you're just like is are they gonna make Bowser funny but then you're like well it is a kids movie so you don't want yeah. the character to be like so scary but like how is this gonna work and then when you see it you're like Oh, it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really works with how they made Bowser funny, and it fit in with the personality. Like, it wasn't like he was like too nonsensical funny. Like he was definitely like, oh yeah, that's from a Mario game. Bowser. Yeah, like, it was definitely in these these kind of scenes where it was like, oh yeah, we, we've seen, we understand his motivations from the games that we see them play out here. Like, yeah, that's definitely something that Bowser would do in the game so of course he's gonna do that in the film so like this makes sense for Bowser and Jack Black really did a really good job of playing that up and also I was kind of surprised when I only found this out because I looked it up online that remember the guy who played King Ezekiel in The Walking Dead? I am King Ezekiel. Welcome to the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah he was the voice of the King of the Penguins. Yeah, he was playing oh. a king again, and like after I, so I looked that up before I saw the movie, and then when I heard him speak, I was like, yeah, I kind of hear King Ezekiel through this little penguin <laughs> getting orders. No wonder, I was like, his voice sounds very familiar, but I just couldn't, like, point to whose voice he sounded like, because like, I was like, he sounds like this character from this movie but i don't think that's him like yeah I, I yeah think, wow okay well good to know yeah <laughs> but yeah he did a really good job too just, all the actors overall i thought did a really good job with their performances yes and down from the principal people to the people who were playing more side characters who maybe have like one or two lines like whoever did we're adorable <laughs> i don't know who that was that line i'm like <laughs> I love this to little toad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love all of them because they're so cute. I mean, yeah, literally vocalized what I was thinking. We're adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, every character that was like in there, they all, I mean, because they all interact with each other at some point, but it wasn't like a, hey, this character's in here just solely to be in here to be like oh look at that because like it was very nostalgic but it wasn't so forced like hey we're just putting this in there so the millennials go watch it <laughs> like, yeah it, it wasn't so much like oh we're just ticking off boxes i mean they kind of did that with some of the bad guys but these were like kind of lower level bad guys they're like oh yeah look at that guy and that but guy it also but made sense for what the yeah situation they it were did in. it made sense because like they're with the characters that weren't there we were kind of like oh it's kind of disappointing that they're not there but at the same time if they tried to force them being in there it probably would have just stretched everything out and then like you said it wouldn't have made as much sense if they tried to shoehorn them in and then you probably would have lost like the plot forwarding especially with the main characters that we had so it's like well if this character gets introduced to this character how is this gonna come back in the end yeah. when you have to like have a resolution and then it's like well now we have too many characters and it's gonna basically be like infinity war where it's like okay they're all here uh -oh. <laughs> but um you're only gonna pay attention to five of those characters yeah end, pretty much you know? it's like there was really only room in this movie for you to focus on a few principal characters and i kind of like that when you have an ensemble cast you know whether it be like a live film or an animated film where everybody kind of has something to do with 
something that goes with the storyline. Yeah, like even though it is the Super Mario Brothers movie, like there was a lot of good contribution from Cranky, from DK, from Princess Peach. I mean, Princess Peach, they did a lot of cool things with her character to like really make her different from this damsel in distress that we were first introduced to back in the late 80s, early 90s. I liked Princess Peach's character. I feel like there's gonna be those people which you can't really escape yeah. from that are gonna be like, oh my god, they forced her character to be like this. And it's like, well, think about it. She is a princess and she has to protect her kingdom and she is technically in distress because she's like, what do I do to protect my people? But she's not so helpless in the end. Like, if anything, she, just like Mario, they have these two conflicts that they have to resolve. And then when they come together, they're like, we're going to help each other out with what we need to solve. Yeah, because they really come to the realization that they're both capable in some way, as especially Mario has a growth in a lot of ways with his character. Literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but they do have that realization that, like, yeah, we can't really accomplish these things without each other. So, like, we're they have the realization of, oh, we're stronger together, even though we're strong as individuals. Yeah. It, is that, I, yeah, I did like how... I feel like it works not just of, like, oh, it's a more modern take of having Princess Peach be this this badass character, but it's, it is a good evolution, and it... it fleshes out her character more of like, oh, okay, she's not just there to gasp and be somebody to rescue. She's there actually making a contribution and having a personality. Yeah, it was like she actually has brain cells that yeah. she uses. She's not like, oh my god, I can't do... Not saying like anything bad about the original Princess Peach in the video games, but like, because, I mean, in the video games, you're basically only seeing it from one perspective and that is of the character that you're playing as which is Mario so yeah and you're not really getting <laughs> you're not really getting like his dialogue like his internal monologue going you're just yeah. like okay like we have to get Princess Peach from this castle but we don't know what else is going to go ha like happen, you know? But it also makes sense for them to have Princess Peach be this way because even in the games, there's like never any indication that there's anyone above her, like rank wise. Like there's no king, there's no queen. At least yeah. not as far as far as all the Mario games that I've played, and I've played a lot of them. I've never seen any kind of king or queen. It's always just been Princess Peach and all the Toads, just like all the citizens of Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> so like, why not have her really be the leader if she's the most the highest ranked royalty, then yeah, why wouldn't she be in charge of, you know, protecting the toads? You know, that these are her people. She'd want to <laughs> learn how to get strong and protect them. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I mean, you said toads as citizens, and I'm thinking, like, a little toad with his little business schedule. <laughs> I mean, they kind of were. They were, like, toads. They were business-owning toads. <laughs> there were. <laughs> the, the, like, picturing of it was kind of yeah. like... <laughs> Today, <laughs> 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 gotta head to the office. <laughs> I gotta do my construction. Oh gosh! <laughs> you can see why Keegan Michael Key did his particular voice because even just doing that, it's a little painful. Yeah, that need scratchy some tea with honey in it. I know. But... <laughs> and yeah, so going and touching on that point of like what all the toads were doing, there are a lot of Easter eggs in here, but the Easter eggs didn't take away from the story. Like the Easter eggs, they more enhanced the story a bit and they were great callbacks for us fans to see we we were both kind of like oh yeah that's that and that's from that game and that's from that game and some of them happened so fast that you're just kind of like wait did you see that like yeah and it's not like it it doesn't make sense there because it's like obviously it's going to make sense in the world of you know yeah and it all does make sense in the world it doesn't feel like it's forced in there like yeah you're just like of course why wouldn't that be there i mean yeah <laughs> they even some stuff from outside of the mario universe is incorporated incorporated into the movie as easter eggs but it's done in a way that it makes sense to the world yeah and yet, this is definitely one of those films that you're going to want to watch more than once, because I'm pretty sure there's some Easter eggs that even I missed. It's not even that. It's just like, I want to go watch it again because it was fun. Yeah, it was like, a fun I movie. I don't know. Something about it, like, 
going in with no expectations and just being like entertained fully until the very end because like recently no offense to any particular movies but i've been having trouble like sitting through films and i'm pretty sure that's also because like you know I have that social media brain and streaming from home where you're like on your phone and the TV's on at the same time yeah. so you're not paying attention to the plot line but like I felt no need to kind of look away or just be like oh god like this movie's gonna get him boring like I felt yeah. like like I don't know how else to describe it other than like the cartoons that we saw in the 90s where it was short and to the point but it still was fun to watch it just kind of feel like a good saturday morning cartoon like a longer saturday morning cartoon it's like i was never bored when we were watching this and it's not just because it's only 90 minutes long but it just it kept your attention the whole time or like it feels like those uh i don't want to mention this company because i know it's gonna probably take away but it, it did feel kind of like those disney renaissance films a where you're bit. like yeah you're like here's your characters here's your the situation that is unfolding and now we have to figure out how to resolve it yeah and mm -hmm. there there was a res i mean you know like it had that like you know beginning middle and end. it had a clear sense of direction yeah. like, it wasn't like now we need a sequel even though they could do a sequel yeah they easily could do a sequel but even if they don't like there was still a good resolution to this we're like okay yeah we like how it went from the very beginning up until the very end like okay yeah it does feel like they wrapped things up but there's still room for them to do something more if they really wanted to yeah and it does seem like they want to because we don't want to spoil what it is but there is an after credit scene so if you haven't seen this movie yet stay for the whole credits not just for there's well there is a mid credit scene too which is more funny but stay for the end credit scene because there's a nice tease in there. But is it a tease or is it just a, oh, you thought we forgot about something, but we didn't. Well, yeah, it could it's, be that. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a, wait, what's happening? Yeah. What is this? What are you trying to tell us there? Mm -hmm. Of course, we've been kind of spoiled by Marvel films that were just like, do it, stay, stay. I know, stay, that I is know part of it, like, because all those Marvel films do it, so we're always like, okay, stay just in case there is something at the end, and yes, there is something at the end for this. Yeah. So I also hate when that happens, too, when you're just like, can I just leave? But, like, also the theater kind of hints to not let you leave because the lights are <laughs> barely, like, up, and I'm like, I don't want to be that person that leaves while the lights are still slightly dim, and then I fall down that flight of stairs, and it's going to be a whole situation yeah but I also I didn't want to leave until I knew that it was over over just because I didn't want to like leave during the credits and then find out from the internet oh what this end credit scene tells us they're like wait there's an end credit scene and I missed it every uh, film so far that I've seen in theaters has that situation where you're like wait what did I miss yeah like huh what <laughs> yeah. yeah so we both really like this movie I think we both want to see it again yes <laughs> with Donkey Kong <laughs> and with Toad. <laughs> I liked how Luigi was. Uh, I I like that Charlie Day said that he wanted a sequel that was more about Luigi's Mansion and more Luigi set to a sequel. I would love a Luigi's Mansion film. Yeah. I mean, like, technically Luigi's Mansion isn't, like, scary to me. It's, like, kind of cutesy. Yeah, scary, it's not really like, meant to be scary. It's yeah. more, like, light horror comedy, if anything. But that movie would be interesting to watch. Yeah, and the way that they wrote Luigi for this, I feel like that'd be another evolution to his character because they definitely touched on like, oh, Luigi's afraid of everything, I which mean, we know from the games. Yeah, is true. I was like, he kind of already was like that yeah. to begin with. So yeah, I would like them to do a Luigi's Mansion movie, and if they do a sequel based on what the end credits is, that'd be fun to, to watch too. So overall, I love this movie. You liked it? We definitely recommend this movie. So thank you for watching. Also subscribe to our channel. She does a lot of the sound stuff. Oh yeah. my god, his oh. thumbs are up! Yeah, <laughs> he has a pulsable thumb. Thumbs up! <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> well, thank you for watching this video, and see you next time. Hello! Thank you all for watching.
watching this video. If you're new here and you liked it, please subscribe and check out some other videos. Also, support Nintendo if you're on Patreon. See you all next time.